How's everybody doing? Good, good. Would you dim the lights and people can sleep? No, I'm just kidding. But go ahead and dim the lights, okay, if you would. I'm really excited about this sermon. I hope that comes across because we're going to be answering a very uh, fundamental question that's part of our life. Why is there so much evil in the world? And I remember when I was growing up, um, at supper time, we would have these things called My Devotions that Concordia Publishing House put out. How many of you are old enough to remember My Devotions? Not like My Devotions, and I wrote these, but the name of the devotions was My Devotions. And at supper time in my household growing up in North Glen, Colorado, we would eat and then we would read My Devotions and then we would have our closing prayer. We thank the Lord for meat and drink through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. And then we would say the Lord's Prayer. And at the end of the Lord's Prayer, I remember these words. And deliver us, you say it, from evil. But I thought about my life and my parents' life and some of the tough stuff my dad went through in church work and all the evil things that happen in people's lives and people dying and stuff. And I thought, my goodness, is that prayer not being answered? If God delivers us from evil... How come every time I turn on the TV, there's evil? How come every time I read the newspaper, there's what? How come every time we look at the internet, there's evil? When we think about it, evil is all around us. We see it in terrorism today, and we always wonder, when's the next terrorist attack going to come? And we categorize that as E-V-I-L. It's part of our fallen condition. It's part of living down here. Evil is a very real part of our lives. And so I sometimes look at this petition, deliver us from evil, and I ask myself, how is that being fulfilled? And how is God delivering us from evil? And when Satan has his way, we sometimes think he's simply not there. When evil enters your life, what kind of questions come to your mind? Do you sometimes wonder, is God asleep on the job? Is he not answering my prayers? Do my petitions that he would deliver me from evil, do they fall on deaf ears? Is he not paying attention? Is he not alert? Is he not awake? And yes, when Satan has his way, we sometimes even ask, does he even exist? And if he does, does he really care? Or is he like a doting old grandfather that sits up in heaven and kind of watches what happens down here, but really wants to be unattached and uninvolved? What does the term mean, deliver us, you say it, from evil? How many of you want to know the answer to that question? Raise your hand. Good. Yeah. If you don't want to know the answer to that question, you can fall asleep now. But the rest of you, you know, you want to know the answer? We're going to dig into the Word of God, and we're going to look at the Word of God because the Word of God speaks powerfully and profoundly about this very issue, deliver us from evil. And to look at this, we look at 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 9 to 18. And we're going to be looking at this text verse by verse. But before we dig into it, we need to remember who wrote the book of 2 Timothy. It was a guy by the name of the Apostle Paul. And he was writing to a young pastor in Ephesus, a young man by the name of Timothy, Timothy right. He was about 30 years old at this time, and he was a senior pastor of the church of Ephesus. Paul was on his third missionary journey, and now he had ended up in Rome, and he was in prison, and he was facing a trial, and as a result of that, he was going to probably be put to death. That's what he was anticipating. So this is his very last writings in the New Testament, his very last letter, and he wrote it to this young pastor. Right before these words, he said, that we're going to study today, he said these words, I have fought the good fight, I have finished the course, I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall award to me, and not just to me, but to all those who have loved his appearing. What does it sound like St. Paul is ready to anticipate? His death. He's going to die. 
And so now he thinks about the legacy of his life and the things that have happened in his life, and he's been tortured and shipwrecked and imprisoned multiple times, sometimes didn't have a place to stay, sometimes didn't have any food to eat. He has been through evil. And as a result of that, Satan oftentimes was lurking around telling him to quit the faith, to give up preaching the gospel, and to just make tents. And what did he say? No way. Jesus Christ is sovereign. I'm going to preach the word of God. And evil is not going to win the day in my life. Did you hear that? St. Paul said, I'm going to preach the gospel. Christ is in my life. And Satan will not win the day. I want to tell you, that's powerful stuff. And that's what we can learn today from the Apostle Paul. Let's look at verse 9 as we look at it. Do your best, St. Paul is saying. Who's he writing this to again? He's writing this to who? To Timothy, right. So he says, Timothy, do your best to come to me soon. Well, I'm sure when Timothy read that at first, he wondered, well, why, Paul? What's going on with you? What's the big deal? Why do I need to come? Then he gets into why he wants Timothy to come. Verse 10, for Demas... In love with this present world has deserted me and gone to Thessalonica. What do you mean by that? He meant this guy by the name of Demas was not willing to go through service and sacrifice to serve the Lord. He ran away. He abandoned Paul. He loved his own selfish comforts more than service and sacrifice in the name of Christ. So St. Paul is saying, this was tough, but Demas left me. He's abandoned me. He's gone. Verse 10, Crescens has gone to Galatia. We don't know who that guy was. Titus to Dalmatia. And then he mentions in verse 11, Luke alone is with me. Now, who was Luke? He was a doctor. He was a physician. And he wrote the book of Luke, and he also wrote the book of Acts. And now he's accompanying St. Paul in prison. Now you think about it, what did St. Paul have? He was sick at times because in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, St. Paul says this, on three separate occasions, I prayed to the Lord to remove the thorn that I had in my flesh. What did he mean? He was sick and he asked three separate times, God remove it. And God's answer was each time, no, my grace is sufficient for you and my power is made perfect in the midst of your weakness. So what was St. Paul saying? I'm sick. This thorn in the flesh has not been taken away, and so what do I need? I need a, who was Luke again? Who was he? A doctor. I need a doctor to be with me. That's why I believe Luke was accompanying him, to help him with his thorn in the flesh, but also to encourage him. So you got all these guys who have left St. Paul, and the only one who's still there is who? Luke. Luke alone is with me. And then he says to Timothy, In verse 11, get Mark and bring him with you, for he is very useful to me in my ministry. Who is Mark? He was the writer of the book of Mark. He received his apostleship, if you will, from his relationship with Peter. Listen to this. In the first missionary journey that Paul and Barnabas went on, Mark was accompanying them. But because he was so young and wet behind the ears, and inexperienced, and overwhelmed with troubles. Guess what Mark does in this first missionary journey? He leaves Paul and Barnabas. Was Paul happy about that? Absolutely not. He was upset about it. But 30 years have passed. Grace covers a multitude of sins. St. Paul now, empowered by the gospel, empowered by the love that he has for Jesus Christ, has just been encompassed by the love of Christ, empowering him to forgive Mark from the heart. And now Mark, 30 years later, has developed into a mighty man of God, so much so that Paul says, when you come here, Timothy, to see me in Rome, make sure that you bring Mark because he is of great benefit to me. Isn't that cool? Do we sometimes categorize and castigate people and judge them and put them down, forgetting that they're immature, forgetting that they're young, and knowing that God isn't near done with them yet? 
That was Paul's attitude about Mark. 30 years pass, he says, hey, make sure you bring Mark with you. He's of great benefit to me. I love it. Bring Mark with you, for he is very useful to my ministry. Verse 12, Tychius I have sent to Ephesus. Then he says in verse 13, we don't know who Tychius was, but here's the picture, guys. All these different people have left him. Some for not very good reasons. Others because they had other things to do. But all these people have left him. Paul is alone, and I believe Paul is a little bit discouraged and even angry because all these people have left him, and he's there alone except for St. Luke. So he says in verse 13, when you come, bring the cloak that I left with Carpus at Troas. Now, why, why do you say that? Bring the cloak. What's a cloak? It's like a what? It's like a jacket. It's like a coat. Why did he say that? Because he was in Rome. And if you've ever been in Rome in January, it gets really, really cold. And so he's there in prison. He doesn't have a coat. He needs a coat. He says, Timothy, when you come to see me, make sure you bring my coat. But even more importantly, what's he say? Not just my cloak, but also what? When you come, bring the cloak that I left with Carpus at Troas, also the books, and above all, the what? Parchments. What's that? Scriptures. He said, while well, I'm abandoned and feeling alone and at times betrayed and at times belittled and evil has entered my life, there is one thing that will sustain me. It is the power of the Word of God. Bring the Word of God to me. I've got to have it. I've got a drink of the word of God. I'm facing severe persecution. I'm in prison all alone. Some people have left me. Evil has surrounded me. I need the encouragement of the, you say it, word of God. He says, don't forget your parchments. Bring them to me. I want to read the Psalms and be encouraged. You're going to see the point of this in just a minute, but let me jump tracks just real quick. When you're discouraged and evil is surrounding you, one of the very best things you can do is grab the Word of God and be encouraged therein. Are you with me? Can I get an amen? amen. You feel discouraged and overwhelmed? Go to the Psalms. I love the story of this pastor went to see this family and, uh, and uh, he says, uh, do you guys read the Bible? And they said, oh, yeah, we read the Bible. We read the Bible all the time. And then they turned to their little boy, Johnny, and they said, Johnny, go get our favorite book, that blessed book, that book we read all the time. Two minutes later, Johnny comes back into the room holding Sports Illustrated in his hand. St. Paul was saying, I don't want Sports Illustrated. I don't want People Magazine. Give me the word. Lord, speak to me through the power of your word. Because therein is found light and love and power and strength. Oh yeah, I've got to have the word. St. Paul was saying, bring me my parchments. <clears throat> Verse 14. Alexander the coppersmith did me great harm. And the Lord will repay him according to his deeds. Who's this guy? This is a guy who is opposed to the gospel, absolutely diametrically opposed to St. Paul preaching the word of God. And he was saying, that guy has done me a lot of harm. He's damaged the message. I see evil through and through in him. God will get even. By the way, how many of you, no show of hands, will sometimes say, I don't get mad, I just get... Do you know what this says? Hey, this Alexander let me down, frustrated me, attacked my message, but God will take care of it. I hope that's your attitude, that when people disappoint, betray, frustrate, irritate, and let you down, you give it to God and you say, God, you, you take care of it. That was St. Paul's attitude about this guy named Alexander. Go on to verse 15. Beware of him yourself, for he strongly opposed our message. Verse 16. At my first defense, no one came to stand by me. Look at this. But what's it say? All what? All deserted me. Everybody left me. 
And then here's a grace-filled statement. May it not be charged against them. Now here's the key point, verse 17. However, the Lord stood by me and strengthened me so that through me the message might be fully proclaimed and all Gentiles might hear it. What was he saying? I'm going to be encouraged by the presence and strength of God and the power found in the word. And when evil comes, and I've experienced evil, God will strengthen me, the word will comfort me, I will persevere through it, and I'll accomplish great things for God. Is there a point of application for you and I? There. Absolutely. Evil is going to come. Difficulties will mount. But God will strengthen you to persevere through them, to not get angry at God, to not give up on life, and to keep on keeping on in whatever God has entrusted you to do. He did that for St. Paul. He can do it for you. He said, God's strength will not abandon me. God's presence will not leave me. The power of the word of God will accompany me. I am more than a conqueror through Jesus Christ who gives me the strength, St. Paul was saying. And then finally, <laughs> last part of verse 17, so I was rescued from the lion's mouth. And then verse 18, look at this, guys. The Lord will rescue me from every evil deed. And bring me safely into his heavenly kingdom. To him be the glory forever and ever. What was St. Paul saying? Ultimately, I'm going to be rescued from all evil. When's it going to happen? Either A, when I die, or B, when Christ comes back. Did you hear that? We are not immune to suffering, pain, and evil just because we believe in Christ. Did you hear St. Paul say, wow, I never thought all this evil stuff had happened to me because I'm so committed to Christ. Did we hear him say that? But we hear people say that all the time. God owes me a favor. Life ought to be easy because I believe in Jesus. And where is that found in Scripture? Nowhere. <laughs> St. Paul says, I'm going to persevere. I'm going to walk in the strength of God. No matter what I face, no matter what evil comes my way, Christ will not abandon me, Christ will strengthen me, and the word of God will comfort me along life's way. So here's some fundamental points we want to talk about. Number one, evil will come into your life. Just because we're Christians does not mean that we're immune to suffering and pain and evil. This is catechism stuff 101. But why is there evil and suffering in the world? When did it all begin? Because so many people, especially our youth today, blame God for the evil and suffering in their life. When was evil and suffering introduced into this world? You guys say it. The fall. When Adam and Eve fell into sin. Ever since then, there's been evil and suffering. And evil and suffering will come into the world, into your life, all because of the unholy three. Do you know what the unholy three are? The devil, the world, and our sinful flesh. The devil throws some temptations at people. People in the world will succumb to them, and oftentimes innocent people are victimized by the bad choices of others, and we have that sinful nature whereby sometimes we make lousy choices and have to suffer the consequences of our bad choices. Did you hear what I said? Satan will throw temptations. People will succumb. That's the world. And even we sometimes, because that sin nature clings to us, will find ourselves making some very evil choices. And sometimes we have to pay the consequences of them. So evil will come. But Christ is with us. We already said that. That Christ will give you strength to persevere through the evil that comes your way and remain faithful to him. And Christ will give you strength to accomplish what it is that God has called you to be or do. Whether it's a student 
or a pastor or a housewife or a worker, whatever your vocation is, St. Paul is saying, God has strengthened me to preach the gospel. That was his vocation. No matter what evil comes my way, I'm going to keep preaching the gospel. Here's what I'm saying. Christ will give you strength that no matter what you're facing in life, you'll follow through. You'll see it to completion. You'll keep on keeping on. You won't give up. You hear St. Paul saying that? St. Paul is saying, yeah, evil's come my way, but I got a task to do. And nothing is going to get in the way of me sharing the gospel. Evil will come, but Christ is strong. He's stronger than death itself. I'm more than a conqueror through Christ. I will keep on keeping on sharing the gospel because Christ is with me. And you can say the very same thing today. So evil will come, Christ is with us, and then finally, someday we'll be delivered from evil. And that's going to happen today, right? We can fully anticipate that when this service is over at 12 noon or whenever it is, 12 noon, Pastor, you're going to go that long? 12 noon, whenever it is? Evil will be over, right? No, you know what? I anticipate Satan working like heck on me this week because of this message. But someday, we're going to be delivered from evil. Someday that petition will totally have its fulfillment. When will that be? This afternoon at 1 o'clock. I want you to come to grips with this. Someday we're going to be delivered, and I ask that question again, when will that be? And what can you anticipate until this happens? You'll be delivered from evil, either A, when you die and you trust in Jesus at your deathbed, or when Christ comes back. And why will you be delivered from evil? Because our God delivered his son to this world who kept a perfect life in obedience to the commands we've broken, who is lifted up on a cross to die for every sin of our life so that we could stand forgiven in the eyes of God. And that same Lord Jesus defeated death, looked death right in the eye and said, I'm going to conquer you, I'm going to deliver you, I'm going to eliminate you so that all those who trust in me will have eternal life and they'll be in a place where there is no more, you say it, evil. Man, I want that now. As great a life as I have. Have you ever had it where you've had so many trials and so much evil happening in your life where you say, Lord Jesus, if you want to come today, that would be okay with me. So what do we do? Until that day, just like St. Paul, we keep on keeping on. We keep our faith strong. We feed our faith through word and sacrament. When we're estranged from God, we pick up the word and we read it and we're comforted therein. When we're afraid of losing our faith, we pick up the phone and say, Pastor Dave, Pastor Tim, or whoever it is that you call, encourage me. I feel like I'm struggling in my walk with God. And we get calls like that a lot. And know that finally, someday when Christ comes back, we will be delivered. So here you go. Evil will come, Christ is with us, and someday we will be delivered. And when will that be? When the Lord rescues us from every evil and brings us safely to the heavenly kingdom. To him be glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen.